Welcome to the elective history class debate. I am Zachary from class 3A4 and I will be the chairperson for this debate. The timekeeper will be Jayton from 3A4. The motion for the debate is the Weimar Republic was doomed to fail from its birth. Proposition For proposition, we have Braden, Ysera, Xavier, and Kyla. From opposition, we have Jia, uh, we have Isin, Muhammad, uh, Arena, and Brandon. Rules of uh, debate: Each speaker will speak for five minutes. The bell will ring once when one minute is remaining. Twice when time is up. Speakers should then wrap up their speech. All speakers can offer rebuttals in their speeches. All points of information are permitted between the first and the third minutes. Third speakers will summarize the case for the entire team. The proceedings of debate. Without further ado, I call upon the first speaker of the proposition, Xavier. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Xavier from the proposition team, and today my team members and I are going to talk about how Weimar Germany was doomed to fail from its very beginning. On the 29th of June 1919, Müller, the, Germ the German Minister of Foreign Affairs, signed the Treaty of Versailles for Germany, making their people suffer and also dooming their own country. The treaty also had harsh reparation payments and Germany had reparations to pay. And those plans were the uh, whoops. Not only that, they also had military restrictions. Germany's military size was reduced to a maximum of 100,000 soldiers. This makes the citizens of Germany to live in fear of being invaded by bigger countries and also their country is weakened. Thank you, Saviour. Now I call upon the first speaker of the opposition, uh, Arena. So, hi, I'm Arena. Today I will be talking about Weimar Germany and how specifically it was not doomed to fail from the start. And our, our second speaker, Mohammed, will talk about how economic resilience helped Weimar Germany further, proving that it was not doomed to fail. Finally, our final speaker, Yi Sing, will summarize our points. Now, one reason why Weimar Germany was not, was not doomed to fail from the start was because during the golden age of Weimar Germany, it had solved, hyperinflation, it had solved the hyperinflation crisis and gained a stronger community due to, being, uh, due to it. Um, in the Weim during 1920s, the Weimar Republic implemented economic reforms such as, in such as the introduction of the new currency uh, named Rentenmark and the implementation of the Doors Plan. Measurements helped stabilize the economy, reduce inflation, and attract foreign investments. It also helped industrial productions and exports increase, leading to a period of economic growth and improve of in living standards. These helped Weimar Germany gain more money, resources and resources, uh, which, why, which caused Weimar Germany to gain uh, a stronger econo economy due to it. Uh, Weimar Germany also was managed to gain the support from the USA and, and gain many other supporters. Uh, I would like now to end my speech. Thank you, Arena. Now I call uh, upon the second uh, speaker of proposition, Ysera. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Ysera and from the proposition team. I will now talk about, about our team's second point, Weimar Germany's uh, economic problems and how it contributes to Weimar Germany's downfall. So, building on to Xavier's point about the Treaty of Versailles, the Weimar Republic was constantly plagued by economic problems which the government failed to solve permanently. In 1919, Germany was close to bankruptcy because of the enormous expense of World War I that lasted much longer than people expected. Attempts to pay reparations inst installments from the Treaty of Versailles made matters worse. For example, in August 1921, after paying 50 million pounds due, Germany requested permission from France and Britain to, sus to suspend payments till, economy, till their economy recovered, but they refused. 
And in 1922, Germans claimed that they were unable to make full annual payment. Um, this led to further problems in which later on January 1923, French troops invaded the Ruhr to seize goods for not getting the reparations from Germany. That was due. German government then ordered workers to follow a policy of pa passive resistance with the and the German industry in the Ruhr. The French failed in their aim and the effect on German economy was catastrophic. This concludes my point and I'll now pass the mic to Braden who will go on to my next point. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I'll now I'll call upon the second speaker of the opposition, Mohammed. Hi, my name is Mohammed Hamdi from 304. And I say that Weimar Germany was not doomed to fail from the beginning. Okay. So to combat the first um, the second speaker's argument. The Dawes Plan in 1924, proposed by Charles G. Dawes, was actually a successfully um, implied action that helped to resolve the reparation payments of Germany. They helped by doing this by introducing different things such as the Rettenmark currency, spoken by um, Aurina before, that helped to reduce the hyperinflation in Germany and balance the economy. Other than that, Germany proved to be a better place for Germans all around Germany by helping to improve their living conditions and livelihoods. Financial situations were better and people were allowed to buy more things and pay for more, and pay for more of their debts. Um, all right. Can I make a point? Um, so with your point just now, and uh, yeah, yeah. TV. Uh, about uh, plan, how does that help Germany in the end? So the Dawes plan actually introduced um, different things, like what I said, the new currency, right? Which actually helped people to regulate their uh, what's called finances, and that helped to combat hyperinflation. But hyperinflation was also a big thing in Germany at the time because it was just after the First World War, and resources were low. But because of the new currency, people were allowed to get more resources. So Germany was actually looking more of an upwards angle, if you, you, know, you can say that. I mean, they're doing better, you know. Financially, they're doing better. Yes. So hyperinflation is lower. Yeah. Um, Other than that, yeah? I mean, temporary in the sense that it was a momentarily solution, you know, but in the end, it worked. That's the, I mean, that's the point of it, you know. It helped, it helped them at the time, and it was the best solution for them at the time. So, I would say that it's actually, it's actually really good that they introduced that, because it helped, it helped them not to pay so much money for the reparations, you know. Yes. A lot of money was lost from there. Yeah. All right, I would like to uh, end and go sit down. Thank you, Mohammed. Now I will call upon the third speaker of the proposition, Braden. Hi, everyone. I'm Braden. To counter Mohammed's argument, stress man's policy did help to solve hyperinflation problem in Weimar Germany. However, that was a temporary solution and it was insufficient enough to address the deeper political and economic issues which were plaguing Weimar Germany. In fact, Schwarzman's policy often caused more problems when they were solved, further destabilizing Germany and leading to the rise of the Nazi party. And here it comes to my point. Proportional representation. It is many different governments coming together to form one big... Wait, no, that's wrong. <laughs> it, in the Weimar Republic, there was, this led to a fragmented party system with numerous factions that made it challenging to form strong and effective governments. There was instability and frequent government turnovers. This is because frequent changes often undermine stability and What? What's your point? 
so <laughs> okay, so hold on. You mentioned about how those pair and that it was like made by uh, stress men and all that, but we didn't talk about stress men at all. We specifically mentioned like how the boss pen and how it introduced uh, like the rental mark currency and helped like uh, reduce the reparations and everything. Could you keep that in one line? <laughs> <laughs> A point is one line, you know. In short, in short, we only mentioned the boss pen. Uh, um, like we mostly mentioned the boss plan. We didn't mention like anything like uh whatever else you just like try and Elvina, phrase it as a question. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to phrase it as a question. Yeah, like what do you mean when you mention stress men? What? What do you mean when you mention stress men? Stress men help produce the DOS plan. Eh. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> what are you doing? Stress man uh, was the one who made the currency which helped the hyperinflation. <laughs> He's holding the point. Do you want to take the point? No, no more. <laughs> No more. No more. I want I want to say the weakness of the government caused severe economic challenges including hyperinflation, Great Depression, and the Great Depression. Proportional <laughs> representation did not directly cause this economic crisis, but it associated political fragmentation and difficulties in forming stable governments. It made it harder and it will be uh, less effective to address and manage all these challenges that was uh, that came up during Weimar Germany. The Weimar Germany faced severe economic challenges, uh, hyperinflation and Great Depression, and it was also due to the Treaty of Versailles following World War I, social unrest, and the rise of paramilitary groups and the overall political climate of all the times also played significant roles in the failure of the Weimar Republic. In conclusion, my teammate and I have summarized why Weimar Germany was doomed to fail from the beginning. It was doomed to fail due to Treaty of Versailles, economic problems, and proportional representation. With that, I end my speech. The third, uh, the third speaker of the opposition is in. Hello, um, I am Yixin, the third speaker of opposition. I would like to first summarize the points made by my team. First, Arena mentioned about the Golden Age of Weimar. In conclusion, the Golden Age of Weimar has helped Weimar solve the hyperinflation, reducing unemployment, and creating better lives for Germans. Many things, such as the Dawes Plan and Return Mark, were implemented to strengthen the economy. This improves the, the living standards of the Germans, making them have a better quality of living. Then, Muhammad has also stated has also elaborated for Arena how the DOS plan and return mark strengthens the Weimar's economic resilience. And so, the DOS plan reduced reparation payments, meaning more money, and again, more money equals the stronger economy. The DOS plan has helped re Weimar regain its footing, allowing it to, like, rise. Return mark also helped the Weimar economy to rise Point. by... Point. Hi. When you say more money, the currency would drop, right? So how did it help? The, the Didn't Weimar the DOS plan help it? But you are raising, you are making more money. And when you make more money, the currency drops. Brayden, raise it as a question. <laughs> how did how making more money help if because, the currency drops? Because, um, let's see. Because didn't the DOS plan create like a new currency, a unique one for the Germans or something? But you're creating more of that money. Great. 
like it's a new currency and the dollar spend basically just like help them gain more money and like didn't the return mark stop hyperinflation as well? That means like as in oh my god, you're making me confused now. I don't want to rebut for you. Why like go? I reject your point. <laughs> 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 Okay, anyways, so, uh, whatever. <laughs> so, I also want to finally mention international support. The Weimar Germany had international support by US, and the US just gave Germany more money. And again, more money, more resources, the stronger the economy gets, and and then there's a higher chance of it su being successful. Packs like the 1925 Locarno Pact and 1928 Kellogg Brown Pact has helped the Weimar Republic. Yeah. No, why? <laughs> I would, <laughs> I would like to. Add, wait, no, no, wait, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. So to summarize, the. Weimar Republic was not doomed to fail from its birth because it had the Golden Age, Dos Pen, Retan Mark, and economic resilience as well as international support to help it. No, go away! <laughs> <laughs> you didn't make us make a point. I will not make, let you make a point. Pretty, please, pretty, please. No! <laughs> Be fair! <laughs> Anyways, that will be all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. That concludes our debate. Oral adjudication means that the chief adjudicator will give feedback on the overall debate and then the results are announced by the chairperson. So generally this debate was on the question of was the Weimar Republic doomed from its birth? In other words, the key question is what were the weaknesses of Weimar that created and magnified problems that Weimar faced and these problems had to be proven to be insurmountable. In other words, proposition's burden of proof was to demonstrate A, the weaknesses of Weimar and B, why these problems then became overwhelming. On side opposition, the goal was to demonstrate some pockets of joy and success that could show Weimar had the potential and the tools to overcome whatever challenges were being brought up by proposition. So that is the key burden on both sides. On the question of clash, engagement was better for this debate because there were points that spoke directly to each team's arguments. However, there were some points still left behind and dropped off. So let me just summarize that this debate hinged on two dimensions. The first dimension, on the political dimension, there was an argument from side proposition that the treaty poisoned Weimar. Firstly, because it weakened Weimar's military and made it very unsafe for future generations. And secondly, because, and this came up very late in third speaker, because the system of elections guaranteed weak governments that could not solve its crisis. These were powerful arguments which were not actually engaged with very clearly on site opposition. However, site opposition tried to make a response by alluding to international support in the sense that even if Weimar was fearful of invasion, as brought up by first speaker proposition, there was no fear of invasion, no risk of invasion, because to start with, Weimar was a very friendly country. And that was brought up in the third opposition speaker. It could have come up earlier, it could have been rebutted earlier, but it came up in the end. On the second dimension, on economic problems. Now this was a bit conflated because at points I didn't know whether the main problem was hyperinflation or was the Great Depression. Looking at the tracking of the debate, most time was spent on the question of hyperinflation. And so I took hyperinflation as the chief problem that was being tackled. And so the question I asked myself was, which side proved to me 
that this problem was either insurmountable, hyperinflation could never be solved, or surmountable, it was indeed solved and Weimar had a firm economic footing. So on this question, I went back to the evidence. I looked at which side could give me stronger evidence to demonstrate whether or not this problem of hyperinflation could indeed be solved, and that's where the debate fell. So now I'll announce the winner, uh, announce the best speaker of the debate. The best speaker of the debate is Braden from Proposition. But now the winning team is Opposition. Thank you. Okay. Okay, well done, well done.